Yes. I have the filter on, that's not very useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's better. So let's just start. Hi everyone, welcome to lesson eight of the. Uh, yes, which is the front? This is the front. Yeah, of lesson eight of the ESO Dutch course. Hope you're doing well. Hope you are enjoying the sun. Uh, today, what we will do. Um, today is a bit of a recap lesson, in, well, in the sense of that we are going to recap some stuff, but not really in the sense that I'm going to set, stand here and just tell you things to do. Um, we will proceed as follows. So first, we will go through the homework of last week, as per usual. Fun bonus question, how do you spell huge? Always difficult to try to do. I, I go for something like this, huge. This is the reason I look quite right. Huge. And uh, maybe with an S. Nah. Ouch. All right, secondly, what we are going to do is think and have a little think, uh, and I'll say it again then. Uh, but I would like for you to, for us to take like five minutes and to think about things you would like to have either repeated or um, things that we did not cover yet and you would like to know, or just other general things that you would like to do, be able to do in Dutch, and we haven't really paid any attention to yet. It's kind of the same as two, but I wanted to do three things, you know, that always feels better, a list of three. Um, and what we will do then, number three, is uh, here our paths will branch. So we'll have a little choose your own class today, and I think that will be fun. So we'll have two options. Uh, here we can, you can either choose to um, stay here for a question hour, so you can ask questions about um, things we covered mostly, so maybe you want to have the pronunciation uh, recapped or I don't know, the modal verbs you want to hear, it, hear again, etc, etc. That is for this, uh, this will uh, totally be like uh, about 25 minutes. Or we, or, or if you think, nah, what we did, oh, did already, that I know about that, that makes sense. Uh, and then we have the exercise of last week that we skipped, and you could do that. Which is fair. Yeah, I think it's nice. Um, so, think about that. Um, well, first think then, and then think about that. And then uh, we'll have a little break. And in the break, I would like you to think about things that you would like to be able to do in Dutch. Or maybe even more things that we didn't cover, but we'll, we won't have really a question hour. But uh, here you can basically pick your own exercise. I'm not sure, yeah, I think you'll be able to see this, yeah. Pick your own exercise, which is kind of uh, what it says, but it will be informed by the things we think up here. So before here, there should be a little more time um, where hopefully um, you have some ideas about things you would like to be able to do. Maybe be able to convincingly convince your doctor that uh, you do really need those opioids or uh, order specific things from a bar, I don't know, we already did that, but maybe you would like to do it again, you just really like bars so much, you just miss them. Or be able to make sense of uh, the things the announcer is saying in the um, train station, things like that, could be anything. Um, so during, before the break, we'll collect those things and then I'll try to make in the break, I'll try to come up with some exercises from things we didn't do or things in advanced scores, or just things that I just come up with on the spot. Uh, or things you come up with on the spot. Maybe you have a good idea for something that you could do, uh, and maybe you just need a little bit of guidance from me. 
Um, and then we can come up with a cool exercise where you would learn something that you would like to learn. So I think it will be fun. I hope you also think it will be fun. Uh, but if not, uh, so that is the plan for today. So let us begin with the first thing and already start to churn and get those mind gears churning to think about what you would like to do. But before we do that, let's go through the homework. And I would also like to uh, have something to say about the homework. Not really about the specific homework, but just the act of doing homework. Oh yeah, the homework's pretty brief. So, uh, starting next week, we'll do the homework a bit differently as well. Uh, which is a bit like on the short side of how many classes are still there, but uh, I think it's still worth it. Um, starting next week, what we will do is that instead of us going through the homework together here, which I think is fun, but uh, we could make use of this time in different ways, and also now only a few of you get real concrete feedback on your homework, uh, is instead you will upload it to Teams, and then I will just check it. Um, and I will be able to give you comments uh, personally to see what you did right or what you didn't do right. Um, that is sort of optional in the sense that the homework is always sort of optional if I mean I, can, I cannot detract points from you but uh, I think it's a good exercise and then in the at the start of the lesson instead of going through the homework together again because you don't need to because the things will already be checked I will instead um, we will instead uh, I will instead mention a couple of things that I maybe saw go awry in general and then discuss that a bit and give you a few small exercises that hopefully corrects or like helps practice those. Um, so that is what we will do starting next week um, and I will put on the team or I will point you to where you can hand in your homework. Is that good? Cool. Then, before we do that, let's do the normal homework. So, um, and I'll, for this one, I will, uh, I'll just ask. So, would someone want to do the first sentence, uh, what Peter is saying? As in read it in full. I can do the first one. Fantastic. Ik moet de bedding afvallen, de lakens wassen, de vloers stapzuigen en de toiletten schoonmaken. Yes. Do you know what it could you translate? Yeah. Um, I must take the, the beds, I don't know, um, wash the sheets or the linens, um, vacuum the floors and clean the toilets. Yes, very good. And that uh, take the beds, uh, here it means take the sheets off the beds. Okay. Yes. Um, one correction, it is unfortunately it's not floors, but it is fluren. And I can see why you would uh, think that because it ends on ER, indeed. Yeah. And so you would think, oh, yes, floors. Uh, but it ends on OER uh, specifically, because this is one sound, and it's, uh, the rule is to add, um, or no, you add an S because this er on its own sounds like er and then you don't want er -un, um, but it, the er is not on its own here it's with the o so this makes one sound namely u and then you get uren and that sounds fine so that's yeah. why you add uh, an n but Thomas, yes can't see what you were writing if you were writing it a bit if you have to get a bit lower oh really oh, okay that's uh that's a that's good to know. So the first one is bedden. Uh, then still a bit too high. Still? Oh, okay, I should angle my camera a bit, but uh, I'll do that afterwards. Um, bedden. I think now you can see it, right? Yeah, no. Yeah, okay. Bedden. Hey, we'll get it out. Um, lakens. Vloeren. And toiletten. Cool. All right. 
Uh, someone up for the second one. Is that oh. rule true for all things that are OER? Is it always EN instead of S for plural? Or is that just in this case? Yeah, I would think so. Um, I can't think of an exception right now, so I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um, cool. All right. Someone uh, wants to go for the next sentence. Oh, yeah, you can go, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll have a go. Um, is it Kunyai Dan de Boodstarpen even do? Yes. Kun je dan de boodschappen even doen? Can you translate? Is it, can you do the shopping? Yes, the groceries. Yeah. Very good. I'm not really sure how this meet, wor what this word is kind of, is so kind of a conjunction of boat and schappen. Uh, schappen is like a noun, which means like shelves. And boat doesn't really mean anything. So I don't know, I don't know how this word came to be meaning that, but it just means groceries. Although the word gross, grocery, I mean, someone who sells groceries is a grocer. I don't know how that happened. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Boats happen. Very good. Then, uh, next one. From Eric. Mm, I can do that. Yeah, could you do the next two, maybe? Okay. Let's go with it. So it's good and it's ook even the farmers back in or on the straat zetten. So I think. Um, I'm not sure about sell. I guess it's I should or I shall or I will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Something yes. those lines. Um, uh, so good and and I will put the trash on the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the trash cans. Just yeah. Uh, and I think yeah, with two Ks. And and Karen moet straks maar even the art apples chillen. Mm -hmm. So I think Karen. Um, must or should, um, how do you say, peel mm -hmm. the potatoes later? Yes. Oh, and I have one question about toilets. Mm -hmm. So uh, the point four is it not a is it not considered as a foreign word coming from English or French? Yeah. No. At this point, I don't think it is. Okay. So. I do realize that that, that that rule is maybe a bit confusing. I think I'll, I'll, I'll leave it out in the future. Uh, because it is kind of hard to tell whether a word has been touchified so much um, or not. So, toiletten is definitely touchified enough. Toilet is just a word, word we say. Um, I guess I don't know what the cutoff date is, say, for when things are considered foreign. Maybe like last 40 years, if you think something. <laughs> but yeah, how would you know? But uh, anyway, good job. Thanks. So, um, next sentence. Could someone do that? No, wait, I will do that one because it's very short and kind of same. And then someone does the, the rest. Um, the, the next one is, en laat Peter, uh, en laat Peter, the cotton bakken schoonmaken. So that's kind of the same as this one here. Yeah. Cotton bakken. And have uh, Peter clean the cat thing. I'm not sure what you call it. Litter box. That's the word. Yeah. Thanks. Cotton bakken. All right. Would someone like to do nine and ten? Um, yeah, I can do it. Great. Uh, so that had. Ich al gedaan, maar hij kan de wanden goed laten. En dan ik en het moet ook even de lege flessen naar de glasbak brengen. Yes, very good. Could you translate? Um, so I already did that, but mm -hmm. he can bring the dog back side later. Mm -hmm. And uh, he can also put the empty bottles or bring the empty bottles to the bottle bank. Yes, indeed. Empty, yeah. Yeah, the glass bank is like the recycling thing for glass where you throw it in and it breaks. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and yeah, very good. Uh, uitlaten here also specifically means in Dutch is uh, walking your dog. So it's not not only just bringing it outside or letting it out, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's literally letting it out. Um, but you, it means walking. Very good. Okay, cool. Then, number two. Uh, wait, I will go over it in full. Um, Peter says, Ik moet de bedden afhalen, de lakens wassen, de vloeren stofzuigen en de toiletten schoonmaken. Kun je dan de boodschappen even doen? Erik. Goed, en ik zal ook even de vuilnisbakken aan de straat zetten. Karen moet straks maar even de aardappels schillen. En laat Peter de kattenbakken schoonmaken. Pieter, dat heb ik al gedaan. Maar hij kan de honden uitlaten. En hij moet ook even de lege flessen naar de glasbak brengen. Voilà. Oké, okay. dan. Um, yes. Could someone offer a description of situation one? It's very interesting. Ja, um, I can go. Thanks. Um, I'll start in stool naast de tafel, which mm -hmm. is there's this chair next to the table. Um, and I'll start in stool off the tafel, which is Yes, very good. I guess I'll see this. Very good. Nice, thanks. All right, so I'm going to do two, three things. Ooh, very complicated. I can just describe the two situations. Uh, Separately. I can try to do number two if nobody wants to. Ah, go for it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the first situation is the vase starts of the book and the mess is. Oh no, the second and the mm -hmm. mess is in the vase. Mm -hmm. And the first is then the book liegt tussen the vas and the mess. Yes, very good. The uh, only thing to improve would be the articles, uh, but that's difficult to know. It is het book and het mess, but otherwise perfect. Het book uh, ligt tussen de vas and het mess. And um, yeah, something along the lines of er zit or er, er zit or is a mess in een of de vaas and then en de vaas staat op een boek. Cool. I will do the last one, because I think it's pretty boring. Um, three. Um, er staat een vaas in de linker onderhoek van de recht uh, van de vierkante tafel. Er staat een vaas in de linker onder. Van een of de vierkante tafel. And then the other one is: uh, er staat de vaas in de linker bovenhoek van de ronde tafel. Ronde tafel. Round square. All right, so good job. And then let us move on to the most exciting phase of this lesson, which is to think. So I would like you, I would like to take five minutes to for us to just 
uh, for you to just think about what you uh, would like to have repeated or what you would like to do later in this lesson um, and write them in the chat. Ideally, write them as like separate messages and if you see someone already writing a message from something that you think, oh yeah, no, I want to do that as well, you can like it or something or give it a thumbs up. Uh, that way I can kind of gauge how much interest there is in specific things. Uh, cool? So, think about what you would like to have repeated or what you would like to be able to be able to learn. No, what you would like to be able to do. Thomas, can yes. you go over the third one really quickly again? Of course. Um, for Because the book says that um, like links woven in is like upper left corner. Ah. But you did the links or linker under book or yes. whatever. Yes, those mean the same, uh, but they're uh, the linker under hook is like a place. So I would say it is in the lower left corner. Um, and links under in means um, is it like, uh, is it, Mm, to the lower left, I would say, like something like that. So you could also indeed say uh, the vase staat links onderin the tafel, something like this. Mm. on the lower left. Yeah, I think in this situation it is kind of difficult because you don't really say, uh, you, use the, you don't really use this per se in reference to another noun. Um, you, you would say something like links onderin van something, of like of the space, of the painting, uh, but of a table that's kind of weird to say. Um, so that's just me giving a bad example, I apologize. Stad links on the in, van de tafel, this is fine. But in general you would use not the table, but something, because this is this word in, it kind of implies it is in, in the thing. And it's not obviously not in the table. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it's like being on something versus like in the general vicinity of something. Not merely in the general vicinity, but really being like inside of. Okay. So if something is links onderin the uh, the camera, I mean it's kind of weird in the low in the lower left of the room, but in the painting that is kind of the the most common way you would say that. Or sh or say um, I would draw a circle here. You could say the circle is uh, links onderin het whiteboard, or links onderin van het whiteboard. You could say the both of the, both of those. Um, because it's kind of in or like really incorporated in and the, va the vase is standing on top of something. So you wouldn't say dit is links onderin het whiteboard, you would say it staat in the linker on the hoek van the tafel, van the, het whiteboard. Right, That's so, kind of then it's, so then it's something being a part of something else or is it just like on it or next to it? Or yes. Whatever. Okay, that makes sense. Very good. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Could you write how you said the second one, so the next one during, or to the other that you used in the first, the first time around? Like, just how you thought it. How I, how I wrote it down nor at, at first? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Please. Thanks. Or sentences in an easy way, like uh, who, where, when, because for sometimes. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Not a difficult one. Okay, because I was uh, explaining, I'll give you a couple of more minutes. Oh, and also, if you would, uh, this is just in general. So, 
if you have something you would uh, want to do, you can also write it down later or be uh, during the break when we come up with exercises. Um, could you also write down if you want to be in the question corner? Because otherwise I will put you in a breakout room to do the, the exercise. Or no, I will do it the other way around. Put in if you want to do an exercise instead of the question corner. Hour. Unit of time or space. Thomas, can I ask one more question about what is on the board? Yes. Um, we have here the vast blah blah blah. So we start with the position and the sentence right away, mm -hmm. and we don't do the error. And then, like, I was wondering also when Hannah gave uh, her answer about what is better, the way she said it or the way it's written here, or with error is, and then this more indirect, I know there was a name for it. Yeah, yeah indefinite uh, way of saying things. Indefinite, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, in, in general, I would say you would if you are if someone is asking you about the thing directly, like if someone's asking, oh, where is the vase? Then you would say the vase that in blah blah blah. If someone asks you, ah, what does that thing look like? Or oh, yeah, whatever, or something along those lines, then you would start with er, because you're not describing one thing specifically, but you're describing just what there is. Uh, so they're both correct, but in it kind of depends on the situation, and if otherwise you would say. Er, staat, and fast. And so I uh, apologies. Uh, I, I didn't really mean to say that one is better than the other when I mentioned only one. Uh, they're both correct. Okay, thanks. Mm Alright, cool. So there's no one mentioned that they would want to do the exercise instead of the questions, so I, I will just do the questions. Uh, you, have some good, you have some good ones. I see a lot of uh, things about, about verbs, which is understandable, verbs are weird. Um, a lot of people would like to see sentence order. I can talk about that. Um, and what else do we see? Ah, vowel combinations. Um, I'll I'll go with easier first, so I'll do the verbs first. So this order is difficult, so I'll do that later. So the verbs. Uh, I see some specific. Uh, would have a general meta overview of the tenses in Dutch and which are when used and which are the most common. Cool. Um, describe the situation in present past and future tense. Um, the present past. That's not a thing, but I think I think you mean the present simple. The same situation, maybe so it's easy to describe in all tenses. Um, okay, cool. Also, feel free to interrupt me and uh, open your mic, and if you have something specific when I say that I'm going to quit, or just in general, I'll just feel free to interrupt me. So, overview of the tenses. So, first, I can only write about to about here, I think. Um, we have the good old reliable present simple. Um, we have the past simple. We have the, I think you call it the future simple. 
another, I, I will call it a feature simple, it doesn't really matter. And then we have the, can you see it until here? Yeah, sort of. Um, the present perfect and, uh, well, the past perfect, but that's very rare. So that's, that's why it's all the way here and you don't really care. Let's start with the present simple. Um, first, this is just when do you use them? The present simple you use when, and you also have like continuous forms. Um, but I won't touch on those right now. So present simple is when you are kind of just describing what is going on around what's happening now. Sort of when you do in English, but in English you would way more often use those continuous forms than in Dutch. And in Dutch, so okay, let's first do um, situation right now. Uh, in English you would almost always use the present continuous when you are describing things right now, like uh, I'm working at the moment, or um, I am meeting someone. Um, then you would use uh, present continuous in English usually. And in Dutch you can get, kind of pick both. You can pick what you want. Uh, people use the present continuous more in kind of informal situations uh, and the present simple more in if you would write it down or you could also just say it. So you can say the present continuous version of I am working right now. You can say ik ben nu aan het werk. Uh, aan het werken, uh, of ik zit nu te werken, or you could say ik werk nu. Um, it kind of depends on what you are describing. So if someone is asking you what you're doing at the moment, then you would use press continuous. And if you are, um, now nah, you could also use press simple, sorry. Um, I think this comes across more formal. I think I will just make a distinction like that. This comes across more formal and this comes across more informal. Um, I can talk a little bit about this in a bit, but this is the most common case, describing something right now. And the second one is kind of describing facts. If you're describing a fact, something that just is the case, um, you would use present simple. Uh, unless it is a fact about something that happened in the past, say, uh, the Tweede Wereldoorlog was from 1939 to 1945. So the Second World War was from 1939 to 1945. Like that is something you are describing in the past. But if you are saying something like grass is green, gras is groen, then you would use the present simple. The other one is conditionals. Conditionals, like if, then. Not very common. And then the final one is uh, um, kind of facts about the future. So you can talk about the future in the present simple when you use, uh, but it's also about the future, so we'll get to that. So you can say some things about the future, but those are more like kind of like facts. So Morgen regent it, you could say that. Tomorrow it rains, that doesn't sound right in English, but. Uh, or you could say, morgen gaat, het, morgen gaat het regenen. Tomorrow it will rain. That's also fine. Um, what else? Uh, volgend jaar ga ik op vakantie, no. Uh, yes, things like that. Uh, next year, um, you can say, I will go on holiday. But in Dutch you would say, next year I go on holiday uh, to something something. And like things like that, or volgend jaar werk ik in America. Next year I will be working in, the, in America. Uh, in those cases you will uh, use the future tense when it's already certain that it will happen. Then, the past. Well, let, now let's move on to the future first. So the future is just... Um, any situation in the future, you will use the future. You can use the future tense. So this is um, you can use the future here, but you can uh, for you can use the present simple in the future in these cases. Uh, but you can use the future simple in the 
for any case in the future. So if something will happen in the future, you can use the future simple with with ga. Ga plus ba, 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 ba. Always works. Uh, the second, that is for ga. Uh, zullen, you use for two situations, for promises, or for things that will happen in the future that are uncertain, like deliberately uncertain. Examples are, oh, um, I will take the trash out tomorrow. Ik zal morgen het vuilnis buiten zetten. Then you use zullen. Um, you could also use gaan. Ik ga morgen het vuilnis buiten zetten, but it sounds more like you, just like a description of what you're doing. Um, uh, or you want to kind of avoid making a, someone is nagging you and you are um, just saying, yeah, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it. Um, but this is more like an explicit promise, but still, I will do it, promise. And things that are uncertain, like uh, if you use the word misschien, if you see this, maybe, then you, you almost always use zullen if it's about the future. Uh, if you say, het zal morgen misschien regenen, um, misschien zal ik volgend jaar naar Amerika gaan, mm, I don't know. But for these cases, for the uncertainty, you can also still use gaan. That's also fine. But you can use zillen. Uh, but for the promises, you have to use zillen. That is kind of the thing. I would, I could put like uh, logical operators here to make it clear for myself, but that won't help you. Uh, and otherwise, I will just write down a lot of words, and that also won't help. Then moving on to the past. Um, past simple you use in three situations when uh, no effect on the present, when it's a period of time in the past, or when you have the word toon in a sentence. So you might think, oh Thomas, why do we learn the present past simple then? If it's only about things that have no effect on the present, usually things I say do have effect on the present. Very astute, dear student. Um, but it is a bit easier, so that's why we start with it. Uh, in the, we might change that around, but at the moment the pre present perfect is in the advanced course. Um, and it is the complete opposite of the past simple, namely when these things aren't the case. So when it does have an effect, effect on the present, um, it's not a period of time, and there is no tune. No, no tune. Then you use the present perfect. And this is the very, um, I will, I will write down that because someone asked that explicitly. So this is um, common, um, and this, yeah, I mean the present sim simple. It's also pretty common for. Uh, no, I will just write, write it down per thing. So here, this is common. Uh, this is common. Um, promises, this is common, uh, this is common, um, no, and here, in, in, in general, this one is less common, I would use red, but then I have to grab it, um, and I would also say this is pretty common, but it just depends on what you're talking about, of course. Um, if you're talking about the past, well, then you have to pick either of these, or this one, um, but if you have to pick, Dutch people will most likely pick this one, which is different from English. English which mo will most likely pick the past simple. So I went for a walk yesterday, you would say, uh, but in Dutch you won't say, ik liep gisteren een eindje. You would say, ik heb gisteren een eindje gelopen. So you would use this one more often. So you would ask, uh, why don't we learn that? But explain. Um, so this is just a normal one, less common, common. Etc. Uh, I could keep talking about this for way longer, but is this approximately clear? Do you have any additional questions about this? Um, yeah, I mean, what, what is it then? 
How could you repeat? Uh, can you remind me what tune is? Oh, tune? Yeah, this means uh, yeah. then or when, sort of. But if you see that, you should use some symbol? Yes. But isn't that about having an effect on the present? It could, yeah, it could indeed, uh, but it doesn't have to be. You could just be telling a story, and then I went to the store, and then I uh, fell on my face, and then I opened a portal to another dimension. You know, it doesn't have to have an effect on the on the on the present, uh, but it can. Uh, but this one just overrules this. Uh, if it isn't the case, but it does have an effect on the present, you still use the past simple. You can't use the present perfect with doom. That just doesn't work. Uh, like I, I have done this and then I have done that, or no? Yeah, you can't say that. Uh, ik yeah. heb toen een broodje gekocht. No. Okay, so if you see that, okay. Although I mean, people don't understand you, and it, I mean, it will. It's not like horrible, but it's you just yeah. would not do it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to try to be too prescriptivist, but I am te teaching, so that makes it hard. Um, okay, and there are questions about this. No? Okay. Then I will go to conjugating. And I'll do that kind of quickly. E live. Um, so the present simple, I think that one you should be the most familiar with. So what you do is you first, uh, we, have, we start with the infinitive. Then we go to the crude stem, uh, crude stem, which is the infinitive minus en, minus en, and then we do some rules, rules, and then we get the stem, and then the conjugation is for the for ik, it is the stem. For jij and hij, etc., it is stem plus a t, and then for the plural, it is the infinitive again. And now these rules. What are the rules? Uh, we don't want at the end of the stem. We don't know. Um, no, sorry. We want to preserve. Vowel sound. So if we have lopen and if we chop off en, we get lop, which sounds different. Lopen, lop. And so we want to preserve that and add an extra o in, back in. Lope. We don't want uh, no double uh, consonants slash vowels if we don't need them. So we have here heaven, for instance. If we, it is not very regular, but it doesn't matter. Chop off en, we get heb. We don't need two b's, we just need one. And then finally, no z slash v at the end. So, from reizen, we go to reis, and we don't like that, so we make it an S. Reis. Ta-da! This is in your booklet. This is clear. Season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Then, very quickly. Uh, future, to go from a future simple to a normal, uh, from a normal sentence to another one, uh, say, ik werk morgen, so I, I, w I work tomorrow, um, if someone asks you what are you gonna, what are you doing tomorrow, you say I work tomorrow, um, and if you, you can translate this into the future, I mean, it is already future, sort of, but you can make it a future simple. And you put the the conjugated verb, you put it at the end of the sentence. 
uh, and in its place you put a conjugation of gaan of zullen. So you say ik ga of ik zal morgen uh, werken. And you make this an infinitive. So infinitive and this is gaan of zullen. Yeah, and it's really at the at the end of the sentence, um, not somewhere before. In Dutch, all the infinitives go at the end of the sentence. And about the difference in meaning, so this is really just a statement about of a fact, like or habit. Uh, that's one of the key things I forgot to mention. That it's about facts and habits, or routines, or those kinds of things. You use the present simple a lot more. So you say, ik werk morgen, if you're like, yeah, I'm scheduled to work tomorrow, I always work then, you would say this. And if that's not a given, if you are, for instance, kind of free with your time, whatever, you can say, ik ga morgen werken. I'm, I think I'm going to work tomorrow, I don't have anything else to do. Um, if you say, ik zal morgen werken, then maybe uh, your supervisor is asking, oh, Thomas, what are you going to do tomorrow? It's like, yeah, 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 I'll work, I'll work on my thesis tomorrow, definitely, mm -hmm. I promise. That uh, is sort of the difference. Then, finally past, um, we, what we do is we have the infinitive, we then get a crude stem, again, uh, which is the infinitive minus the m, as you know, then we Take, uh, we check, let's start here again, does crude stem, I apologize for my handwriting, end in a consonant in sexy, soft, ketchup? Oh. And then, if yes, it is for the singular it is stem plus te and for the plural it's the stem plus ten and if not it is stem plus de for the singular and stem plus den uh, I don't know why I underlined that, for the plural. For regular verbs in the past simple. There's a lot of irregular ones, sadly. I can't uh, give you the, f the formula for how to do the regular verb, irregular verbs. Uh, but in the main, ch in, the, in the general channel, there's a file in the files thing that has like um, sort of patterns that irregular verbs fall in. You can check it out if you want. For instance, uh, uh, eten, which means to eat, is in the past tense aten. Geven is giving, in the past tense is gaven. So this a usually becomes an a. Um, same with o's usually become e's. And yeah, there's, so there's some patterns there that you can, that makes it a lot easier to learn. Uh, normally, which, how you do that is you can develop that intuition after seeing a lot of those words, but you can do it like this. Now, as a, as a little bonus, this is just, it's kind of a spoiler. So don't tell the, don't tell the cops. Um, I will give you how to do the present, present simple. I'll just do it very briefly. And you now know how, when to use it. Uh, present perfect, sorry. What you do, ik, um, uh, ik eet an apple. I eat an apple. You move this here, and then in general, in most cases, 
re replace this with the conjugation of heaven. So ik heb an apple. Ah, that's not a good example. Ik werk. Uh, because this is irregular. Um, so okay, <laughs> let's make it a, a stupid sentence. Ik werk an apple. I work an apple. Doesn't mean anything. Just an example. Ik heb an apple gewerkt. So what you do is it is crude stem. No, it is sorry, 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 sorry. It's stem. It's ge, and then plus d or t, depending on if again the sexy soft ketchup thing holds. Sometimes you use ben or or, or zijn, you know, but I won't go into detail about when you do that now. Most cases you just use have, like ninety percent of the cases. So that's uh, present perfect. Cool. Spoiler. Alrighty. Um, well, that is already covered a lot, and I covered one thing, uh, as, as in a couple of time, but did one thing. Um, so meta overview, um, sentence order. Mm. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, I'll try to do that kind of quickly. Can I erase this? Okay. Yeah. All right. I will try to speed run sentence order. Sentence order, probably the most difficult thing about Dutch. Not gonna lie. Um, that's why we don't do it a lot in the beginners course, but it is good to know some of it. Um, I, I will write down first, no, okay, I'll, I'll just write down how it's normally done. So you have, first you have subject, they have finite verb, then you have um, something, then you have um, sometimes the object, and sometimes adverbs, then you also have object sometimes. I'll get. Uh, I'll very quickly mention one. Um, then you have junk, just like miscellaneous stuff, like neat, for instance. And then you have the other verbs. So all the other verbs in Dutch always go at the end of the sentence. They, you just don't see them here. Uh, it's very different from English. So if you say, uh, "I've eaten a banana today," you have "I have eaten a banana." today, and then maybe you have some other verbs in there. I won't be able to have eaten a banana today. So all you have all those things that start. But in Dutch, all those things go at the end. Ik kan uh, niet een banaan uh, hebben gegeten. You would all put it all at the end. So put it at the end. That's one. Um, I will write an example sentence. Ik um, zal jullie vandaag goed op Teams uh, oops, les I will give you uh, I, I will I will teach you uh, a good lesson on teams today so this is the general structure of a sentence this is kind of you can ignore this for now. Um, just think of it like this at the moment. So you first have a subject, then you have your verb that you conjugate. So zullen here. Then you have all the adverbs. So you have time adverbs first, and then manner adverbs, like how are you doing things? Then you have place adverbs, like where are you doing things? Uh, and then you have stuff. Uh, here, here's, uh, oh, and, oh then, so, sorry, 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 sorry. Then you have the object, very important. The object, so the thing you are doing, if you have an object, sometimes you don't have an object. Um, 
And then you have all the other verbs. Other verbs. Very important to put those at the end. This is probably the most important thing to remember. Because usually, instinctively, a lot of students do most of these correct. But this always goes wrong. And namely, putting the other verbs not at the end, but just putting them, I don't know, somewhere like after here, or maybe here or something, happens a lot. It goes all the way at the end. And there are barely any exceptions to that in Dutch, which is rare. Like, we have so many exceptions to, to a lot of rules. But this is one of the things that uh, do stick. So if I want you to take one thing away from this, other verbs here. Now, about niet. Niet, uh, I think we either we did cover it already a bit, or we will cover it. Um, so I won't talk a lot, a lot about this. The difficulty with neat is that it de really depends on what you are negating, where you put it. In general, if you aren't negating anything specific, but just the whole sentence, like... Um, then you would put it um, here. Yeah. But if you have an object in a sentence and you want to negate it, then you usually put it here. But if you want to negate anything else, then you put it in front of that. Uh, so if you want to say, I, I I'll teach you not today, good Dutch, whatever, then you put it in front of today. And if you think you'll not do it well, you put it in front of that. And if you don't think it won't be here, then you put it in front of that. Um, yada, 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 yada. So in general, but in general, you put it here or here if you don't know where to put it. Um, and then there's also an, uh, another thing where sometimes you don't use niet, but you use another word, namely geen, which means no or none. Um, and here, the, yeah, so it gets a bit complicated, but we'll, I think we'll, I don't think we covered it, but we think we covered it in like net less than 12 or something, or nine. Let's see, 11. Or did we already talk about this? No, it's lesson 10. Okay, two lessons. So be patient. Okay. I will erase this because looking at that for a lot of time won't help you. I'm sparing you. All right, I think we need a break. So, mm, I think I'll do a short break. Five minutes. So we do have time for it to do a uh, uh, cool exercise. So please write down something you would like to do in the chat. If you don't have any ideas, I'll just come up with something. But if you think, oh yeah, I would like to practice this thing, we have time for this. So go do that. And then I'll see you back in seven minutes. Eight. I'm generous. Ah, now that's that's a good question. It's indeed that that, that can be a bit confusing. Uh, so with the other verbs, I mean all the verbs that aren't conjugated. Um, so all the other verbs where you don't do the check of oh. Um, is it is it singular or is it plural and is it first person or is it like third person etc if you don't look at that for the verb it's another verb and you only do this with one verb in a sentence okay. Okay, thank you. cool so i uh, and more specifically there are two kinds of other verbs there are the infinitives and there are the past participles which are things like done and uh had and given those things and the infinitives are like to give to have to be mm -hmm.